TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Hey everybody, I'm so glad you could join me on today's video because what we have here are the two most affordable new electric cars you can buy brand new in the United States. And we're gonna find out simply which one is better value and which one is worth your money. So let's get right into it. What we're looking at here are two brand new EVs, a 2023 Nissan Leaf and the new Chevrolet Bolt. And these are both front wheel drive hatchbacks and they both start under $30,000. So in this little mini series I'm working on, I wanna to prove to folks so you don't need to spend 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars to get into a new EV. You can do so for under thirty thousand dollars and that's before the new seventy five hundred dollar federal tax credit which works on both of these cars because they're both built right here in the United States. Now let's start out with the cost comparison. So the Nissan Leaf for 2023 starts at $28,040. The Chevrolet Bolt is a little bit more affordable coming in the mid $27,000 range. So roughly $500 less to get the Chevrolet over the base model Nissan Leaf. And now the question you're all probably wondering, how far do they go on a single charge? Now, the Nissan Leaf comes in two battery configurations. The Standard battery is a 40 kilowatt hour unit and that's rated at 149 miles on a single charge according to the EPA. Now, if you wanna spend a little bit more coin for $8,000, you can upgrade to the 60 kilowatt hour battery and that's rated at 212 miles on a single charge according to the EPA. Now let's contrast that to the Chevrolet. The Chevrolet only comes in one battery configuration, 65 kilowatt hours, even at that entry level price. And this vehicle is rated 259 miles on a single charge according to the EPA. So let's put this into perspective. For that $28,000 price point, you can get 149 miles of range with the Nissan or 259 miles with the Chevrolet. If you wanna spend 37 grand like this Leaf, you can get up to 212, but that is still less than a $27,000 Chevrolet Bolt EV in the range comparison. So range for dollar, the Chevrolet wins by a long shot. Chevrolet 65 kilowatt hours, this Nissan Leaf 60 kilowatt hours. All right, so we got range out of the way. Now let's talk a little bit about charging. Now the Nissan Leaf plugs in here at the front of the vehicle. There is this flap and I can open that here via the key. And I actually like the position of the charge port on the Nissan more than the Chevrolet. And I'll show you why here in a second. But uh, on the Nissan, you have a couple of different charging options. You can charge at home on AC, both 110 or 240 volts. And if you plug in here, max capacity of this AC charger, 6.6 .6 kilowatts. So we're looking at like 14 and a bit hours or so for a full charge on the Nissan. Now the Chevrolet has a pretty different charging situation. The, part, the port is located over here on the driver's side. Now this has an 11 and a half kilowatt onboard charger versus six and a half in the Nissan. So even though the battery is larger in this Chevrolet, charge time's only around seven hours. So that's a pretty big difference. Now, when we talk about DC fast charging, both can peak at right around 50 kilowatts. So both are not gonna be extremely fast in terms of road trips. Chevrolet says 100 miles of range gained in about 30 minutes. Um, Nissan says zero to 80% in about an hour. So if you compare these to some of the newer tech coming out of like Tesla or Lucid or even Volkswagen, right? Uh, 55 compared to 150, 200, 250 kilowatt peak charging is pretty unimpressive. Now. I did mention that I like the charge port location more on the Nissan compared to the Chevrolet. The Chevrolet is okay, but this is optimized for chargers located on the driver's side of the vehicle. What's nice about the Nissan is it being in the middle, it means that you can access this port from both sides of the vehicle. So you can, uh, you know, pull up to uh, units both on the right and the left side of the vehicle. Another big difference is that the Nissan runs on the Chatamo standard of DC fast charging, which is slowly being phased out across the US. So there are still many, many, many Chatamo ports around, but on some new installations, they're becoming more and more rare. And typically at like an Electrify America station, you'll have four stalls with CCS, which is what the Chevrolet uses, and the only one stall with Chatamo. So even though both charge at the same peak charge rate of about 50 kilowatts, this uses that CCS standard, which is uh, becoming more and more, um, well, the go-to as, we, uh, well, as we're deep into 2023 now. So, so far, the Chevrolet is ahead of the Nissan in terms of range. I like the onboard charger a lot more, 11 and a half kilowatts versus 6.6. .6. 
and I like the CCS standard, the Nissan excels in the charge port location. Let's talk a little bit about design. Now they are both front wheel drive hatchbacks. However, in overall length, the Nissan is some 13 inches longer. So it says it is a significantly larger car compared to the Chevrolet. Now the Leaf is several years old in this generation. It has had some changes for uh, the 2022-2023 model year. Um, I kind of dig these wheels. This one, as we mentioned, is the SV Plus. So we're looking at a $37,000 car MSRP, but these funky 17-inch wheels are one of those things that you either really love or really dislike. Most people I talk to, they're not super fond of them, but I think they're really cool. Now, certainly the Nissan's a little bit more angular. You've got some kind of sharper creases, uh, pretty pretty consistent roof line as we come along the back. We've got this little blacked out bit to disguise the C-pillar. And then we've got these swoopy tail lights in the rear with the brand new Nissan badge. And I like on this model how the Leaf and the SV logos are a little bit grayed out. I think it looks pretty cool. Now the Chevrolet is also a fairly handsome car. It's a little bit more curvaceous. It's got a slightly lower belt line in my opinion relative to the roof height, which is pretty nice. These 17 inch wheels are the base wheels on this car. If you upgrade to the 2LT Chevrolet, you get a slightly different design, but also 17 inch wheel, certainly not nearly as funky as that Nissan. And then one thing I dislike about the Chevrolet from the rear is actually the tail light situation. So you think that these are the brake lights and the turn signals, but the brake lights and the turn signals are actually down here on the bumper. And I've always thought that was just a little bit weird comparing um, the Chevrolet to most new cars on the road. Now let's kind of hop inside these vehicles and talk about the inside because we're gonna see some pretty big differences there. And we'll start in the Nissan Leaf. Now, even though the Nissan Leaf is going on several years old, they have done a nice job of keeping it pretty relevant in here. Now, um, it's a much more conventional layout, a much more simple interior than what you'll find in the Chevrolet. Of course, push button start here, but I love all the hard controls. So we have both volume and two knob here on this Nissan screen. Nissan does a really nice job in terms of their connectivity. It's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and all the phone connections that you'd come to expect. The screen is not as large, not as impressive, not as colorful as what you're gonna find in the Chevrolet, but I find it to be super easy to use and very, very intuitive. Now below that, we have our automatic climate control here. Um, this one also has the heated seats, USB-A, USB-C ports, and then you've got this really funky shifter park reverse neutral and drive and then you also have the braking mode here and then Nissan offers an eye pedal functionality which is your one pedal driving system we'll talk about that during the driving portion of this video and we also have an eco switch there two conventional cup holders a nice squishy armrest with a small storage cubby there in the middle one area where Nissan definitely excels over the Chevrolet the seats are far more comfortable in this car I find them to be much more supportive I like the thigh support more um, they're just a little softer in my opinion and overall much more comfortable. Digital dash layout or partial digital dash layout on this Nissan. So we have an analog speedometer there on the right and then to the left of that we have a digital screen and one area where Nissan really excels over the Chevrolet and I don't know why GM doesn't do this but they make it very clear what your state of charge is here not only in a diagram, but in a percentage. So you can see we are sitting at 30% state of charge, super easy to read, very easy to get to. I also like the, inf um, the information that this car tells you. Lots of really good information, including battery temperature, battery capacity. Uh, it's just really, really easy to use and very, very simple. They did a great job integrating the screen here on the Nissan Leaf. All right, let's go compare this situation to what we find in the Chevrolet Bolt EV. Now we just purchased this Chevrolet Bolt EV. This is the 1LT. It's the most affordable model. The 2LT is a little bit more expensive. It gives you um, like leather seats, heated seats, that kind of thing. But interior wise, there's not a huge difference between the Chevrolet 1LT and the Chevrolet 2LT in terms of the Bolt. Now, stepping inside here, a lot more modern, a little bit more futuristic, a little bit more swoopy. Obviously the screen is significantly larger, but I, what I love that Chevrolet did is they still give you hard knobs and some hard controls, which I think is just fantastic. The quality is really good. Also very easy to use compared to the Nissan. Um, very well integrated here into the dash. I personally prefer the screen and the, 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 the overall technology in the middle here of the Chevrolet over the Nissan. Um, other nice thing about this car, 
There we go. The beeping is stopped. Um, we still have hard controls for the climate control, automatic climate control there. Single zone. You can spec this car with heated seats, just like the Nissan. Now, the shifter is also a little bit unconventional in the Chevy. Not as crazy as the Leaf, though. Park reverse, neutral drive like that and then you've got your one pedal drive mode there via that button we don't have an eco mode interestingly enough but we do have a sport mode in the chevrolet and then uh, moving back here a couple of cup holders and then a very large sensor armrest here um, screen wise we do have a fully digital instrument cluster here in the chevrolet so uh, we can also change the style a little bit from a modern to an enhanced layout, depending on how you like to configure that. Uh, tells you lots of good information. But once again, nowhere in this car does it really tell you percent state of charge. You can go into details. You can kind of calculate it out using this little chart here. Um, you can also see impact. So lots of good information. I just wish there was a screen that had state of charge. The, the closest you can get is this flow meter where you can count uh, based on these 5% bars how much charge you have. And then you can also, if you have the Chevrolet app, you can kind of access the app via Apple CarPlay in here and see it that way. But I would just wish they'd show it to me in the screen there. Uh, but overall, a very functional interior in the Chevrolet. Steering wheel controls even on this base model. Plastic steering wheel on this unit. If you get the 2LT or the leather package, you get a nice leather wrapped unit. Uh, it feels a little bit more airy in here, which is interesting. So the windows feel um, a little bit bigger and it feels a little bit more roomy. Even though the car is some 13 inches shorter, uh, it feels a lot kind of more open inside the Chevrolet. And wait till you... Uh, Wait till we get to the trunk of that Nissan because we're going to notice some pretty interesting differences comparing the bolt to the leaf. Now this is where I'm going to grab my cheat sheet here. I don't want to get these numbers wrong. But the Nissan Leaf has more room behind the second row. So as I lift open this trunk, we actually have 23.6 cubic feet of space behind the second row. Now let's go ahead and fold that second row. We're going to see how it folds here. Pull a little lever there and that folds like so. And if I scooted the seat forward, we could get that more horizontal, but you'll notice there's a pretty ginormous lip there um, in the floor to the seat. And when you fold the second row down, you get a maximum of 30 cubic feet worth of space. Okay, remember that number, 30, that's important. Now, as we go over to the Chevrolet, behind the second row, you actually have less space, 16.6 versus 23.6. However, when you fold the second row of the Chevrolet, that's where you get a big advantage in the bolt. So that jumps to 57 cubic feet. 57 compared to 30 in the Nissan, which is a really, really large difference. You also have this false floor, which can kind of be manipulated to several positions, um, depending on what you need to carry. So this car is 13 inches shorter than the Nissan, but the cubic, <laughs> the cubic feet of space when you fold the second row is 57 compared to 30. Now, what about back seat space? Well, we're gonna go ahead and check out the Nissan first, see what it's like. This is my driving position here at six feet tall. I'm gonna lift up these seats. Now, interestingly enough, we have a really large hump running through the center of the car. In case, I don't know if you wanna kind of film that. Um, this, is, of course, is a five-seater, so there's that large hump. A couple of uh, USB-A ports back here. But, um, yeah, it's a little bit disappointing to see that hump. I will say, though, it's got good headroom, even at six feet tall, and pretty decent legroom. Let's compare that to the Chevy. Now, the Chevy has a completely flat floor in the rear. You want to film through that side? You might get a better view of that. So you can see no hump there in the middle, also a five-seater, pretty similar legroom, maybe a little bit less than the Chevrolet compared to the Nissan, and then headroom, also pretty similar, perhaps just a smidge less seat of the pants experience. But let's do this. Let's get both of these cars out on the road and see how they drive. All right, so getting behind the wheel of the Nissan Leaf, Nissan has done such a good job over the years of evolving the Leaf driving experience, and now it is incredibly smooth and incredibly sorted. I think one area where the Nissan excels over the Chevrolet is ride quality. Neither of these cars are really performance cars that you want to go zipping around a track or through a canyon, but in everyday driving scenarios, I find the Nissan to be a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more refined. It's also extremely quiet in here. Now performance, this Nissan has 214 horsepower, 250 pound-feet of torque, and when you accelerate, it takes off 
with a lot of confidence. This is a quick car. Now, we ran both of these down our quarter mile test, and what we found is that the Nissan will do the quarter in 16.08, and the Chevrolet will do the quarter in 16.03, so they're nearly neck and neck. Um, one advantage that the Nissan has, at least in this configuration compared to the Bolt, is that this SV Plus has a integrated heat pump, which is a much more efficient way of heating the car in the winter compared to a resistive heater. So that is a very nice feature. What is not a nice feature is the battery cooling situation. So the Nissan Leaf still utilizes air-cooled batteries, whereas the Chevrolet has a liquid-cooled system. Now, batteries are kind of like humans. They like to be 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when they operate the happiest. And especially in the summer when things get really hot, and especially if you are fast charging a Leaf, it's not hard to um, put too much heat in those batteries and, and cause the vehicle to derate the charging. And then you also have to worry about the long-term um, durability of the batteries. Now both these cars have eight year, 100,000 mile battery warranties, which is just fantastic. So overall, the Nissan Leaf is a really nice car to drive. It's very quiet. It's surprisingly quick. You can jump out in front of traffic if you have to. There's almost no torque steer. I really like the way it ramps into the uh, into the power. It's not, it's not super immediate off the bat, but it's very smooth. And Nissan's done a great job of minimizing torque steer. Add to that the fantastic ride quality, and it is a very nice car to drive. All right, so we've jumped behind the wheel of the Chevrolet. Now, immediately I can tell you that the ride quality and the interior cabin noise, not as refined as the Nissan. So it's a little bit more bumpy over smaller undulations and it doesn't tackle bigger bumps quite as well. However, overall, it is still a very refined place compared to a gasoline car to spend time and to commute in. And the acceleration, while well, it feels more violent at lower speeds, they do get more torque steer in the Chevrolet. So you definitely want to hold on to that wheel a little bit as the front wheels fight for traction. Um, zero to 60 in this car, they say six and a half seconds, 200 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque. So lower horsepower, uh, but a little bit more torque than the Nissan 266 compared to 250. Now, the greatest thing about both these cars is they apply for the $7,500 federal tax credit if you meet the requirements. They have income caps um, in the new system, that kind of thing. So if you apply, these could be sub $20,000 cars, especially factoring in state credit. So if you apply for the full 7,500 here in Colorado, plus the couple thousand state, you'd be looking at like, $18,000, $19,000 car, which is so much car for the money. Um, overall, I like driving both of them. They're both fun to drive. They're both zippy. They're both quiet, especially compared to anything gasoline. I just think that the Chevrolet represents a better value. I mean, sure, like if you get the base one like this, the steering wheel is pretty plasticky. And yes, the seats are still not excellent. They're much better than the old bolts, which were just intolerable. These ones are tolerable, but they're not great. But um, the packaging as well, right? This is a much smaller car than the Nissan, but the interior feels bigger. It feels more airy and you get a lot more storage capacity. So um, if you're just looking for the most car for the money, you know, we'll talk about this in the close here in a sec, but it's uh, it's Chevrolet all the way. Chevrolet all the way compared to the Nissan. Now, of course, Nissan has a new Aria that's moved to CCS um, in terms of the, uh, the standard. It's got big improvements over the Leaf in terms of battery, but it's also a lot more expensive. So Chevrolet to Leaf, well, let's cut to the close. I'll tell you my opinion. Well, we've come to the conclusion, if you have under $30,000 to spend on a brand new EV and you want it to qualify for that $7,500 tax credit, should you go Nissan or should you go Chevrolet? Well, in my opinion, the choice is obvious, Chevrolet. Um, you get significantly more range at the starting price. You get that CCS charging, you get a better, better standard screen. I just think it's a much better value overall. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, here's a case behind the camera for making this video happen, and we'll see you in the next episode.